This is my current rack system for my car. It's actually recycle, reuse. Um, this has been on three different cars now. Originally I made it for an Outback. My next car was a Saturn. And for the Saturn I made the frame longer. I took it apart. See the splices. It was made it quite a bit longer. But for this car I shortened it up a bit. Other than that, that's the only changes it's had. There's metal pipe inside these. Um, is it conduit? I think just conduit. Metal conduit. It fits tight inside these uh, pipes. Um, only on the long ones. So it doesn't flop at all. So it doesn't really matter that it's unsupported in the middle. I decided to, this year to set it up without any uh, racks on at all. I took both of my factory crossbars complete, completely off at this point. Just to have better access to the four cleats that everything fastens to. So the rope goes vertically and then it circles all the way back to the opposite cleat and they all do this you know mirror image of that. Um, and that way I can use my handy dandy knot that I like so much for tensioning. And I can get a lot of tension in these ropes. We're going to keep working at it until this thing is pretty darn solid. It's on there hard. And all this really has to do is keep the rack itself in place. It doesn't really have to hold the canoe. The canoe is going to actually be supported by the cleats. And the fact that this is pulling inwards on the cleats is kind of a good thing because the canoe is going to be pulling outwards on them. So I'm actually kind of loading them against what the canoe is going to be loading on them. So it kind of works out. Not too bad to put on or off. I used to do the clips the opposite way. I had these bigger clips going vertical, but then they go too far vertical and you can't get around the pipe enough pull. You lose some of your downward pull. So it's better to use the short clips. I probably could have done all eight clips with the short clips, but I actually got a pretty good deal on the bigger clips at an Amish place. Here we are from the back view with one canoe loaded. My smaller, lighter canoe. I'm going to go for a solo mission, hopefully, tomorrow. And you can see I sort of uh, cross. Instead of going to the cleat right below the canoe, I cross over to the other side. Just makes it easier to get to them without a canoe over them. And if I have two canoes, they kind of help pull the two canoes tight together. The other canoe is uh, just a little bit bigger and it hangs over about a little bit more in the front and a lot more in back. And putting the canoes this far back, the nose of them anyway, keeps the cameras clear and the system doesn't go offline, the uh, automatic braking, emergency braking system. And I also have the yoke, which is just a strap in this canoe. So I let that go around the uh, cords. I unbuckle it and buckle it around the cords. Gives me a little more stability. And also on this canoe, well on both canoes actually, I have a cord. Just give me one more thing so it doesn't heave forward or backwards if front or back cords get loose. So those are just extra insurance, especially on a longer trip. So I'm locking my canoe with the flimsiest possible of locks. It's a little toolbox lock I keep kind of buried because it's kind of a joke. So this is kind of vulnerable for me. I got all my stuff, you know, basically anybody could take my stuff at this point. 
But I'm not taking my camera with, you know, not leaving my camera down there. I'm taking it with me. And uh, I'm not going to be gone that long. And I do have a flimsy little lock on it. Here's Dobson Bridge. Parking my car at the destination. I have my bicycle ready. And to take my bike out. And ride back to the canoe. Parked here at the destination, Peterson Bridge parking area. It's a pay area, pay area. I do have my permit. And now the boat lock becomes a bike lock. And here I am, ready to depart. In the mighty pine. Very cold waters in May. And then after one day's break, do it all over again. This time the more challenging run from Peterson to Lowbridge. It's a more challenging bicycle ride too, which is really my biggest reservation to doing this trip. The bike ride is 7.1 miles, doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it's up an extreme hill just to get out of the river valley. And then uh, shovel up and down hills on the way through on the highway. Plus you're on a highway, which is not the most pleasant biking. But off we go, the hard part's done, now it's just floating downstream. It's all downhill from here. Low bridge and 8 river miles. 7.1 miles by bike, 8 miles by canoe. Apparently. Beautiful area, nice spring day.